Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Virtual UK Construction Week. Um, we're really pleased that you can join us online. Obviously, we would uh, normally be meeting at, in person at the NEC this week, um, but we're delighted that we've been able to bring you the speakers that were all due to be there um, virtually online. So, uh, yes, well, we're really glad that you could join us. Um, please uh, take uh, advantage of the opportunities that this week can present because um, we have uh, got uh, opportunities for you to network and meet suppliers and you can contact other delegates on this platform as well. Um, and all the content you're going to see as well is, is being uh, recorded and stored so you can go back and watch it at a later date. Um, so I mentioned and um, you saw that brief video at the beginning that we are um, going to going to be uh, doing two shows in 2021. We, we, uh, the, the, the reason for that is that we believe there's a lot um, of power in meeting face to face. There's a lot of opportunity in construction and uh, we've been working with uh, the CLC and our partners on the roadmap to recovery. And uh, yeah, we, we look forward to being able to meet you there and be a catalyst for that recovery. So on to today, and I'm delighted that it's our very first keynote on Virtual Construction Week, and I'm delighted uh, that we're working with the Construction Innovation Hub uh, on this uh, event as well. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Keith Waller, who's the Programme Director for the Construction Innovation Hub. And uh, he's going to be talking to us today about the, the work that the Construction Innovation Hub has been doing. Um, I believe we're halfway through um, the mission uh, for the Construction Innovation Hub, really bringing together the expertise of the, of the sector and, and uh, making that transformation that we all know um, needs to happen. And, and I believe it's happening. So really delighted, Keith, that you're going to give us an update today on, on what the Construction Innovation Hub has been doing. And uh, I'll come back for some questions at the end. So if you want to put questions in the box, please do, and I'll put them Keith at the end. Um, so over to you, Keith. Uh, thank you, Nathan. Good morning, everyone, and, and welcome to UK Construction Week 2020. Almost 12 months ago to the day, I was on the main stage at UK Construction Week 2019 in Birmingham with BBC Breakfast, Steph McGovern, talking about what was then a relatively new Construction Innovation Hub programme. Over the four days of that event, I must have clocked up more than 50,000 steps meeting people from every corner of the construction sector and beyond. What was unmistakable was the keen sense of energy and optimism. There were innovative ideas and inventions aplenty, and from our part as the hub, it was the perfect environment to introduce our transformative programme to the world. What a difference a year makes. So, as a new decade dawned, I for one felt a keen sense of enthusiasm and excitement about the future direction of construction in the UK. For the first time, we had a funded sector deal and a shared ambition for transformation. Government and industry had set out a plan and we were working together to build a better future, not just for construction, but for the society and those who depend upon it. Transformation felt closer and more achievable than ever. I wish I could tell you the rest is history, but of course, we don't yet know how the story will play out. As the dark clouds of COVID descended upon us earlier this year, optimism gave way to uncertainty and anxiety about what the future has in store. The past few months have been particularly bruising for construction, with projects in every corner of the country put on ice, and many talented and committed people put on furlough or facing redundancy. Despite the doom and gloom and uncertainty, however, what has been unmistakable over the past few months is a resolute determination to face this challenge together. What we're seeing right now is a collective determination and a commonality of purpose in our sector, the likes of which we've never seen before. The COVID crisis has undoubtedly given us all newfound appreciation for collaboration, and this is something we must absolutely build on in the months ahead. This year, we've seen the Construction Leadership Council, co-chaired by Andy Mitchell and the Construction Minister Nadeem Zahawi, really come into its own. A great example of what can be achieved when industry comes together and works together with government. When the COVID crisis struck and site activity stopped almost overnight, we spoke to government with one united voice as a sector, and government listened to us. A CLC COVID task force was set up, meeting daily at first and still twice weekly, to make sure issues around safe working, material availability, access to the range of government support measures and much more were developed, embedded 
and understood. The task force has been quick to identify the critical support the sector has needed during this time of crisis. One critical example is the talent retention scheme, a portal to match vacancies with those seeking opportunities. The talent retention scheme is crucially important to ensure we can keep as much talent in the sector so we can deliver those essential schools, homes, hospitals, and much more that are needed now and in the future. Hundreds of businesses have already registered who can post vacancies and find new workers. If you're not registered, you should be. It's free and easy to navigate. And of course, the CLC has published the Roadmap to Recovery, a joined up plan to cover restart, reset, and reinvent phases for the sector over the next two years, making sure that, that getting back to work just doesn't mean getting back to bad old habits. It is recovery and transformation together in a single plan. So with the CLC playing such a key role in the immediate response to COVID, the restart phase, we all need to build on this to ensure the reset and reinvent phases deliver too. Minister Sahawi will be speaking tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. and I would urge you to tune in to hear what he has to say. Not only about what has happened, but what comes next. I know the minister shares my ambition for real sustainable change, not just a return to business as usual. He understands the sector and with it, he actively engages with it and together with his officials in Bayes has made a real difference. When I sat on that stage in Birmingham 12 months ago, I spoke enthusiastically about what the Construction Innovation Hub was setting out to achieve. Today, 12 months later, I'm delighted to be able to tell you what has been achieved and where we are headed next. Late last year, as we move beyond our mobilization phase, we restructured how we deliver our program around four key themes, value, manufacturing, assurance, and digital, and appointed impact directors for each of these themes, each of whom you will hear from on different panels throughout the week. We've also changed how we deliver our program. We move very quickly away from a self-delivery model into a co-delivery model. And the reason why is quite simple. If we spend the four years of our R&D program developing in splendid isolation, utopian technical solution, and there's no one there who wants to use it on their projects, and no one who is able to deliver it, then we've failed. We want our program to have impact on real projects and programs, on how they are delivered by our industry, and the benefits they deliver to users, owners, operators, and society at large. That is why we're collaborating with industry and government across all parts of our program, across all our four thematic areas of value, manufacturing, assurance, and digital. The COVID has, of course, had a real impact on our program, but perhaps not quite as you might expect. Rather than putting things on the back burner and waiting for the crisis to abate, we have instead accelerated key projects in preparation for the reinvent phase of the CLC roadmap. Let me give you some examples. During the summer, we launched our critical flagship project, the Value Toolkit. The toolkit is, in essence, a process and suite of tools that will support better decision making uh, throughout the whole investment life cycle, from business case through to procurement and delivery and into operation, improving overall sector performance with key policy objectives, such as driving modern methods of construction delivering social impact, and crucially, accelerating the path to net zero. Our fundamental goal with this project, and our wider value fit for theme, is to reframe the way decisions affecting the built environment are made. It's time to stop opting for the cheapest option and consider what's best for the future. We are very fortunate to have strong support from some of the construction's leading voices, like the IPA, ACE, Constructing Excellence, Seeker, and the CLC, as well as our group of relevant authorities to take this crucial package of work forward. Critical to the success of this project, however, is getting the sector thinking and talking more about value. For this reason, the Hub today is launching a social media campaign under the hashtag Value Toolkit, and we'd like to invite everyone watching here today to go on Twitter and tell us, in your own words, what putting value at the heart of construction would mean to you. So please get tweeting 
and encourage your colleagues and friends to do the same. Second of our themes around manufacturing. So our platform design program or kit of parts, which we launched in July last year, will enable clients to meet the demands of future infrastructure, create opportunities for the sector and better outcomes for the people that matter most, the end users. Through the platform, we want to help the sector employ established manufacturing processes with trusted and secure information management, innovative technologies and value-based procurement decisions, which will help raise and maintain standards that ultimately improve lives, <clears throat> not just for today, but for future generations. And to underscore how important the platform is to our wider transformative program, I'm excited to announce that this work is being accelerated on this flagship initiative to ensure that it will deliver greater impact sooner for our sector and for wider society. As we look to the future, we can't repeat the mistakes of the past. We must create robust assurance frameworks and digital processes that help create the golden thread of information to instill trust and confidence across the built environment. Through observing leading sectors, we've identified best practice methods and are exploring how to adapt them to our sector. A key example of this is the Construction Quality Planning, CQP, the first in a series of new processes under, develop, under development by the Construction Innovation Hub in partnership with industry. It is inspired by using Advanced Product Quality Planning, or APQP, a process already widely used across leading manufacturing uh, sectors like aerospace and automotive. And tomorrow, we'll be announcing the key findings of an industry collaboration on CQP, carried out over the summer months, and what the next steps for this project will be. If the past few months have given us anything, it is without doubt a newfound appreciation for the role digital technologies and processes play in all of our lives and are very likely to play for many months to come. This year's all virtual UK Construction Week is a prime example of how digital technologies can help us adapt on a large scale when the circumstances demand it. As individuals, we've all become used to working across a plethora of platforms from Zoom to Skype to Teams. And even if like me, you still haven't managed to master the uh, ever elusive unmute button. As a sector, we must embrace the transformative power of digital. As the hub, we are supporting digital transformation of organizations delivery and infrastructure, enabling them to achieve the level of digital maturity required to future-proof their businesses. Together with CDBB, BSI and the UK BIM Alliance, we have continued to support the development of the UK BIM framework to ensure all organizations in the built environment have the guidance and tools to realize the many benefits that come with BIM adoption. Earlier this year, we took another step toward towards delivering a national digital twin with the publication of the Pathways Towards Information Management Framework. And on Thursday this week, we'll be announcing more details on our BIM interoperability and government soft landings program, which are working to ensure whole life value from digital. Digital, in many ways, is a fundamental thread which is critical to the delivery of many of our other projects. So before I wrap up, I'd like to thank Nathan and the UK Construction Week for the inviting me to open this year's show. This new virtual format may be quite different to what we've been used to in previous years, but for me, the true value of UK Construction Week uh, and shows like it offer the opportunity to meet and exchange ideas with people from every corner of construction. With that in mind, I would very much urge you to join as many sessions as you can over the course of this week to hear ideas and to have your say. Throughout this week, my colleagues within the hub and across our growing network of partners will be talking about what the next few months will look like for our transformative programme. This will be an opportunity to learn about many exciting things that are happening as part of this joined up in transformation mission. And where you feel you can become part of our movement, help shape our sector so together we can make a change. So I would like to... Uh, Thank you for your time today. Uh, encourage you to uh, engage as much as you can with all of the activities. And don't forget the hashtag uh, value toolkit. So thank you, Nathan, and back to you.
Thank you, Keith. That was brilliant. And, um, you know, really, really good to hear um, the amount of work Construction Innovation Hub have been doing behind the scenes and uh, out, out in, in the sector through through the pandemic. It must have been a, a quite a challenge to, to adapt um, to the situation we've had this year. Um, obviously, I wanted to ask a little bit about the value of toolkit, really, and, and what um, what how you'd like the sector to sort of get involved. I, mean, I guess anyone in the construction sector is it's is relevant to is that right anyone anyone from an sme through to a single trades person all the way through to the big contractors and architects absolutely nathan in fact more than that we have probably about 130 individuals from different organizations large and small contractors consultants suppliers already working with us on this program industry bodies trade associations uh, and some of the leaders uh, from those sectors are already helping to shape that. It's really important we make decisions based on how we deliver real value as a sector, not how do we go back to the old ways of buying the cheapest thing, which tends to lead to problems uh, on industry sustainability, quality of product, safety. We don't get the right services for users and for society if we buy cheap. We have to think about value and how that can drive those better outcomes, not just for the clients not just for the uh, the user but for society at large yeah do you, do you think the pandemic has um kind of made people think differently about this in terms of you know i guess we we all now probably way more aware of our our environment and how how delicate it is do you, do you think you know the, the construction industry have you seen that beginning to have to have an effect on the construction in industry do you think yeah, and I think in, in a way, uh, if you look at um, uh, the impact that COVID's had, not just on the sector, but the, the, the wider society, yeah, I think actually what it's helped to do is bring the industry together, uh, facing a common crisis. And rather than uh, just a narrow focus on restarting our activity back in the old ways, there's now a lot more ambition being set for that transformation journey. So as I said, I, 2020 uh, you know, will be always thought of as a year of crisis, but it may also be thought of as the year when that true transformation in the sector began. So I think you'll see uh, parts of our program being accelerated and a bigger ambition from governments and clients to start thinking about how they build back better, faster, greener. It's not build back cheaper, it's build back better, faster, greener. So that requires us to think differently, act differently. And I think having that value uh, helping to shape those conversations will ensure we are supporting social impact, uh, we are supporting a path towards net zero, we're thinking about the operational performance, the whole life value, not just the capital phase of construction. So absolutely a wide range of people involved and a quite a, uh, an endearing shared ambition to move on that transformation journey, perhaps rather quicker than we might have dared hope at this stage last year. Yeah, that, that's really positive. So I, I guess, you know, we would normally be at the NEC, as we said at the beginning of this um, keynote. Um, we, we've made a, a commitment to do two shows next year in a, in a way to, to try and catch up for lost time. What, where would you see things being in May when we, we kind of have our event in May um, and then again in October? Do you, are there roadmarks that you, or, that you see that we can perhaps aim for for then? Um, working along the sort of CLC's roadmap as well? Well, I think certainly you'll see uh, the new CLC programme set out in the roadmap to recovery, and there's a number of activities and outputs associated with that. But equally, we'll see uh, later in the coming months, we'll see a spending review from government, uh, we'll see a budget, we'll see documents like the National Infrastructure Strategy published, and they'll be quite clearly setting out the direction of travel we expect to see in terms of how much money government is looking to invest in the sector to drive some of its wider agenda. You know, how is it going to get more homes? How is it going to build more hospitals? How is it going to build more schools? How is it going to support uh, a path to net zero? So I expect to see a lot of direction coming out from government, and perhaps a question for the minister tomorrow, about an ambition to invest in the sector, to drive the jobs and growth that come with it, but also to do it in a way that supports those broader objectives. So as well as um, as well as the events and, and, and milestones that sit in the CLC plan, there'll be a number of important fiscal events which will help really help shape the direction of travel, both in terms of the amount of work that's going to be procured, but also how 
that's going to be delivered. I really are hoping to see some strong signals that we expect to see a faster path to net zero. We expect to see greater social impact. We want to see more digital manufacturing. We want our buildings to be safe and assured. So I expect to see a policy environment and a CLC roadmap working in harmony to drive the sector forward on a path of not just recovery, but transformation as well. Brilliant. Okay. Lots, lots to sort of look forward to um, for, for tomorrow for the, from the construction minister. Um, so, um, well, that's great, Keith. Thank you very much for, for, for giving us that, that vision. And um, uh, let's, uh, yeah, um, look forward to sort of seeing how that develops over the next, uh, over the next year. So um, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you.